Here at Rouge National Urban Park, it's home to a wide range of species and is protected against development. But a new project out of the University of Toronto and the TRCA shows a disproportionate number of frogs are dying on roads at certain spots here and elsewhere. On the winding roads here near the Rouge River, a refuge from city life. But for frogs and other at-risk amphibians, new data shows a heightened need to provide refuge from humans. Amphibians are generally very vulnerable because they're small and they're slow and they lack avoidance behaviors and they're actually attracted to roads for thermoregulation. Nicole Regimbal, an ecology undergrad student at the University of Toronto, is a key force behind a new project that shows four species of frogs have higher vulnerability of road mortality. Frogs are really important in wetland ecosystems ecosystems in particular, I mean as predator, as prey, really if you remove or see a drop in any instrumental aspect of an ecosystem like that, there's going to be cascading effects. In parts of the Rouge, as well as near Humber River, areas where wetlands are, she says these are spots where eco-passages should be added during road reconstruction projects. Not only do frogs control bugs and serve as food sources for bigger predators, another factor to keep in mind. They're also really important indicators of overall environmental health. So really the frog is who you look at to see is this wetland healthy or not. Like they're very susceptible to like like contaminants and pollutants and stuff like that. At the Heart Lake Conservation Area in Brampton, two polycarbonate fiber tunnels built right into the road during reconstruction. On the roads here, there's thousands of dead frogs that were occurring in every year. Toronto and Region Conservation Authority scientist David Lowry says the passages allow for frogs and other amphibians to cross underneath, aided by fencing as a guide. The cost of this is really minimal, so like the more support and active uh, community members can be the more that these can be implemented and help to protect our ecosystems. The City of Toronto is currently updating its wildlife crossing mapping and a spokesperson tells me this will help determine where eco passages should go. Lawry says if the problem is unchecked it leaves a stark reality. Definitely draw down the population levels because there's such a high mortality rate that over the long term that the luckily that the population would Bridges would decline dramatically. Meanwhile, back at U of T, hopes the project will serve others well into the future. We've known based on what's happening at Heart Lake that it's effective, but having the numbers and having a paper kind of supporting that it's effective is really what was necessary to go to legislators and say, hey, I, need, I want an eco passage on this road and this is how we know it works. For more on this story, go to citynews.ca. In Toronto for City News, I'm Nick Westall.